a Stuart Beam engine refurbishment part 6, finishing the reassembly and testing the engine using compressed air. But the first thing I need to do is make a base that the engine can be fastened to. You've already seen me painting the metal plate. Now it's time to cut some pieces of mahogany strip and these will be used to veneer the edges of the board that is underneath the steel part. As I've just changed the bandsaw blade for a new one, the bandsaw is cutting much better than it did previously. If you've seen my other videos about making mounting boards, you will recognise the technique. To stick the mahogany to the wooden board, I'm using some cyanoacrylate adhesive, also known as CA glue, as well as often been referred to as super glue. And this is the high viscosity version of this adhesive, and it generally stays where you put it. The low viscosity stuff really does run all over the place. It will run down your fingers and stick them together, and it will creep its way just about over every part that you put it on. A quick word about cyanoacrylate adhesive, or CA glue or super glue. When using this adhesive, please make sure that you use it in a very well ventilated area, because it does give off some nasty fumes. Also, when using this type of adhesive, it's a good idea to wear some kind of eye protection, because if you splash it in your eye, you will really regret it. The video that you've been watching has been edited. I'm already rubbing down the piece of wood and putting some varnish on there. I'm applying the varnish with a cloth because I don't want it to look varnished, I just want to seal the wood. And this is important when using it for a baseboard for a steam engine, because the steam engine automatically drops water everywhere, and I don't want it to be soaked into the wooden base. By doing it this way using a cloth, it's much better than a paintbrush because it looks like it's been waxed, but it is, after all, polyurethane varnish, which is very good at sealing wood against the water. Allowing sufficient time to elapse for the varnish to dry, it's time to fit the bolts, and here they are, going into the holes from underneath. I managed to find some quarter-inch BSF bolts, and these are countersunk, but the problem is the tops are a bit ugly. So what I'm going to do is show you how to round the tops of bolts and it makes them look much better for mounting steam engines. First of all I flatten off the top and I tilt the bolt and clean the sides up and then I use this motion keeping the bolt moving at all times to round the end. And then I move over to the polishing spindle with some abrasive on the wheel and I clean up and polish the end of the bolts and they look really good. And now I can permanently fit them in position. Then all I have to do is just put the metal plate over the top of the bolts and then fit the engine in position on top of the metal plate, being very careful not to scratch the base as I do this. And what follows next is a sequence of a washer on each of the bolts followed by a nut. And I don't tighten them up until I've got everything in position. So here's the washers on the other end and here's the final nut that will hold the bed plate onto the mounting board. And the obvious next job is to use my wonderful Barco adjustable spanner to tighten the nuts. And no, I'm not going to round the edges of them because these Barco spanners are really wide and once you set them to the gap that you need for the nut, they stay in that position and don't move about much. To fit the pedestal that supports the outer edge of the flywheel, I used a screwdriver to tighten up the bolts. I didn't want to tip the engine over, I just moved the entire assembly to the edge of the bench and I can get a screwdriver in underneath being very careful not to drop it on the floor. The first job now is to check the alignment, so plenty of oil on the crankshaft and I feed it through the bearings to see whether it aligns okay because originally someone had fitted some shims underneath the pedestal and I really don't want to do that, I would rather grind some metal off the bottom of the bearing itself to level it up. As I try the oily crankshaft in the bearings it seems to rotate quite freely, so maybe I don't need to do any shimming or packing whatsoever. I think I'll take a break from the big stuff and look at the small stuff. Here is the arm that connects the eccentric rod to the valve gear. And I'm replacing all of the grub screws in the valve gear with Allen head grub screws. I really do not like slot headed grub screws because if the slot breaks then you're stuck with the grub screws in the position that they were last left in. So where possible I change them to Allen head grub screws because they're a bit stronger. In this clip I'm just bolting the two gunmetal bearing blocks down to the bed plate. There isn't much room for a socket so I'm using a 6BA open ended spanner which makes it a bit time consuming but I can think of lots of jobs that are far worse than this one. I'd just like to take this opportunity once again to remind people that when you're working with such small bolts do not over tighten them because if they shear off 
you will have to start remanufacturing parts or removing broken bolts and at this late stage of the operation you can do without that. In this clip I'm currently threading the crankshaft through first of all the first bearing, then through the eccentric sheave, then through the flywheel and now through the second bearing. And it appears quite tight but it isn't, it just seems to be tight at the moment for some reason. I think it's just that the eccentric sheave and the flywheel are very well machined. And it's not a tight fit but it's a perfect fit through both of them and that's why the flywheel spins so true, it doesn't wobble at all. This engine really is very well engineered and I'd like to say that it's a credit to the builder because I've not found any serious problems with it whatsoever. It's time now to fit the connecting rod to the beam. I've coated the pin that goes through the beam with oil because this part gets quite a lot of pressure when the engine's running. All I have to do now is just fit the two nuts on the end of the pin that goes through the beam and that's it for that part of the connecting rod. And it's also advisable to tighten up the nuts on the pin to hold the connecting rod fork in position on the beam. And now it's time to look at the other end of the connecting rod, the business end. A pin needs to first of all go through the phosphor bronze bush and then be secured to the crank web. And to do this, I'm using a pair of pliers to hold the end of the pin, but I'm using a piece of brass so the pliers don't mark the end of the pin. And all I have to do now is securely tighten the 2BA nut that holds the pin very tightly against the crank web. Without further ado, I connect some compressed air to the engine. And after setting the position of the eccentric, it runs fairly well. It's a bit clunky in places. You can't hear it in this clip, that's why I'm speaking over it. It's almost silent. But you will hear the clunkiness in a minute when I run it fast. I can tell by looking at this engine and listening to it that the valve in the valve chest needs adjusting. This is something I haven't looked at. I assumed it to be correct, but I think it's not quite where it needs to be. Not a big job. I will do this shortly. So now that's about it. I'm going to stop speaking and just let you watch the engine running. So thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.